August 8, 1918. On land, Germany endured its darkest day of war. Knowing the Kaiser's demand for victory was unattainable, the German officers pressed forward, fighting for more advantageous positions at sea, in the hope of gaining leverage for negotiating a truce. Following a series of revolts by their troops, German command ordered naval captains to tighten their grip on sailors and quash any stirrings of mutiny at sea. Hearing about acts of insurrection, Ernst felt emboldened and decided he had to deactivate his submarine's torpedoes. While Ernst was happy to be alive, he again found himself in the crossfire of war and his freedom taken away. Now a British POW, his only consolation was being able to play his fiddle once more. September 26, 1918. Determined to cut the German supply line, 
Allied forces launched the Meuse-Argonne Offensive. For James and his fellow soldiers, this undertaking was bigger than any they had faced before. Soldiers on both sides steeled themselves for the whistleblow and the impending chaos of the charge. Their sole comfort being the unwavering support of their brothers in arms.
Freddy, barely able to get the words out, pleaded with James to lead the men and continue their push forward with the offensive. Reluctant to leave him behind, James complied.
Flying in such stormy weather would have been a challenge for any skilled pilot. Even so, George had decided to brave the storm and risk his own life to save his friend. Stunned to see her dear Freddy suffering, Freddy. Anna quickly got to work. Stay with me, you're going to be all right. Tiempo, Freddy. You're all right. Hold on, Freddy. You're all right. Come on, come on, stay with me. You're all right. Oh. Come on. Come on, stay with me. Come on, Freddy. After four long years, Freddy's injuries had ended his fight. Always the one to protect others, he would now be the one in need of care on the slow road to recovery. Despite his wounds, he remained in good spirits, thanks to Anna by his side, every step of the way. With Freddy out of commission, James took over as squad leader. For the Harlem Hellfighters, the experience on the ground remained brutal and the memory of their fallen friends, ever-present. At that very moment, news of the truce being signed between the German and Allied forces made its way to the front. Anna was sent to relay the good news without delay. Just like that, at the 11th hour, on the 11th day of the 11th month, the war suddenly stopped. Bells rang all over the country spreading the good news. The war was finally over. Seeking a new life far from the devastation of Europe, Anna and Freddy set off to make a home in the United States. Pending the outcome of the Treaty of Versailles, Ernst was still being held captive in France as a POW, forced to do hard labor. Thanks to George's flying and active valor, the RAF accepted him as one of their own.
After being duly rewarded the Croix de Guerre by the French military, the Harlem Hellfighters were once again placed under American command. And while the Harlem Hellfighters prepared to return home, James and Lang Edwards volunteered to help the Service of Supply clean up the battlefield. Ernst? Ernst! Ah, oh, James! Yes, sir. Dear James, I'm not sure where or when this message will find you, but please know that I've made every effort to contact you. The day had started so well. We were on our way to buy furniture for our home. When some men told us we couldn't shop together. Freddy argued with them. And it ended badly. Freddy! Hold on, Freddy. Come on, Freddy. Don't leave me. No, no, no. Hold on. You're all right. You're all right. No. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No. Hold on. Come on, Freddy. No. No. No, no, no. No, no, no. Hold on. You're all right. You're all right. No. No, no, no. No, 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 no! No! I couldn't save him.
I'm including the letter he intended to mail you. I'm sorry to share this horrible news. Your friend, Anna. Dear James, I hope you're doing fine. I can't wait for you to come back home, and I bet you're feeling the same way. I'm sure you're keeping everyone in good cheer with those sweet melodies you play on your clarinet. I never imagined romance would come back into my life, especially during a war. But Anna and I are both enjoying a fresh start. None of this would have been possible without you. Your optimism and infectious spirit brought me back to life. It's also been such a joy to see you mature into the man you've become today. I'm so incredibly proud of you. With all that you've accomplished, I know now there are better days for us, for people who look like you and me. I'm certain that the future you and so many others fought for will become a reality. P.S. I hear there's going to be a parade in honor of those who served during the war. You should be home by then, and I will be right by your side. <laughs> See you soon, little brother. Freddy. Despite heroic efforts during the First World War, it would take nearly a century for the Harlem Hellfighters to finally get the recognition that they earned with their lives, their dignity, and their valiant hearts. And like so many other people dragged into this war on all sides, we should honor both the remembered and the forgotten, whose lives were indelibly altered ruined and far too often lost in the machinery and fate of the Great War.